much for that introduction and thank you all so much for your time on a beautiful Saturday uh, in San Diego, sunny San Diego. You could be anywhere else, uh, but you are here uh, in wonderful Southeast San Diego where we are trying to make some changes here and thank you, Bennett, uh, for the work that you do to make that so. Uh, thank you for the introduction and thank you for the time uh, that you're committing this afternoon to try and raise the civic involvement uh, of the Filipino community here in San Diego. Uh, particularly for those who are from outside of our community who have traveled here today, we welcome you to San Diego. Uh, we are at our core a tourism community. We are proud to welcome people to our town. We pride ourselves on being fairly hospitable. I'd also point out that our tourist tax is lower than most other big cities, so we're a relative bargain and you should spend a whole lot while you are here. Um, I want to uh, just jump to the heart of the matter because I'm a little bit pressed for time this afternoon. I apologize for that, but as my friend Chris Kate mentioned, uh, I got a couple of other things on my plate uh, these days, uh, which involves going all over the city uh, and talking to our diverse communities. But the message really actually is the same in so many cases, whether it was uh, when I was in Southeast earlier this morning for a different event, when we were in Uptown communities just a moment ago, I'll be in Scripps Ranch in a minute, and then back down to Uptown, and then later to Downtown. So we're getting around. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, my vision for the city is one where we want to not be America's finest city, we want to be a great city. We want to be a world-class city. And I can't see us doing that without the active civic engagement of the API community broadly and the Filipino American community specifically. I think some of you know we are blessed in San Diego to have one of the largest concentrations of Filipino Americans in the United States. We are 200,000 strong in our county. And that number is quite impressive when you know that we are about a three million person region but the purposes of this afternoon is, of course, the fact that while we may be many in number, numerically, population-wise, we are not strong in terms of civic participation, in terms of voting, surely, registration to vote, but also in terms of service and elective office. And I'll give you a quick example. In the city of San Diego's history, there have been three people of API descent who have served on the San Diego City Council. The first is my dear friend, Tom Hom, who is with us here today. The second is me, and the third is Chris Kate. So in the 200-year history of this city, there have been three. And they have served so closely together, generally, that we can all fit in one room at the same time. And I'm glad that we're all alive and here to tell the story. But the point is, the depth of our political participation is not very deep. In fact, some would say it is shallow. That's an amazing song, by the way. But it's not, it is not when it grains, comes down to politics. Um, but the other proof point is that Tom's service on the city council and in the state legislature, and then my service, is a gap of 50, nearly 50 years. And he looks amazing, does he not? Yes, he does. But we went through a significant period of time where there was not that representation, that voice, that seat at the table. And so I would point these things out not to shame us, but to really challenge us, to say, well, how are we going to change this narrative? How do we take the enormous numbers of those of us who are here, and they are so many, 200,000 strong, and yet only yield three people on the city council for the eighth largest city in the country? Now, there have been pioneers in other parts of our areas, in other parts of the community. I'm looking at my friend Ditas, who has been holding it down in National City for a very, very long time. I think of my friend Mitz Lee, who did serve on our, our school board and continues to serve actively uh, in the Mira Mesa community. There are many people who have made their contribution, but we still have yet to get all the way up the tier, Tom and I being the only two have served in the legislature from San Diego. Now, that is a, there are also challenges statewide. Before we blame ourselves as San Diegans, because I know sometimes we can get down on ourselves, the fact is, is that our API caucus in the legislature is as big as it's ever been, but it's 11 members out of 120. And probably more disturbing, all 11 are men. So we have a lot of work to do as a community. And that was why I took this opportunity and appreciated the invitation to be here, because we don't often talk about this. In the crush of day-to-day -day business and the ability and the needs to take care of our families, um, in terms of the issues that we grapple with, and whether that's housing affordability, homelessness, infrastructure, traffic congestion, climate change, there are many reasons why we would not necessarily focus on this particular issue. But I would humbly suggest that all of those issues I just mentioned are exactly the way that they are now, in part because the people having those conversations in those rooms of power are not often representative of the totality of our city, of our region, of our state, and of our nation. 
As was mentioned, I am only the second Filipino-American to serve in the California legislature, despite our huge numbers in California, the first being the incredible Rob Bonta. For those of you who are streaming online, Rob, I love you. Hello. I will see you on Monday when we get to the Capitol. But we have to ask ourselves, why is it just the two of us? And now, this has been my running joke with Chris Kate, but the fact of the matter is, is that between Rob Bonta and I, we don't even make a full Filipino, OK? <laughs> Same is true with Kate. <laughs> we will get there. <laughs> we will get there. But whether it's a full Filipino or an Asian woman, period, we have so much work to do. And I think about from my own family's experience, and so many of you are San Diegans and you know this story. My grandfather uh, is Filipino. He has presumably, how did he get here? Go ahead. The Navy, of course. Of course it's the Navy. You know. <laughs> it's a, we all know. It's a way to share common history. Uh, came here, did not go home, because that's what we do, right? Because it's amazing. Why would you leave San Diego? It's a f fantastic place. But never taking that next step. And so I guess the message, and again, forgive me for being maybe a little brief, although every uh, keynote address should be brief. Am I not right? Uh, no one ever said, I wish that speech went on longer, ever in history. Has it been recorded? Has that had been written? Oh, I wish that guy talked for a little bit longer. No one ever says that. But I guess my point is, is that going from my grandfather who came here in the 1940s and then stayed and built a life for himself and raised a family and, and had some relative success, you know, uh, we, no one ever said to me, you should run for office. At least it was not necessarily put in my mind. And in fact, a part of why I want to be here is I very much believe in the idea that if you haven't seen it, you can't be it. And I think that this challenge that we have by our low numbers in elective office, in appointed office, in rooms of civic power, are really self-perpetuating. And by virtue of the fact that you're going to ignore perfect San Diego weather to be in this beautiful air-conditioned room, it tells me that you're willing to take that step, that you will be allow me to deputize you today to take the step forward to serve. Uh, now I'm going to contradict myself really quickly. I, people did encourage me to run, but that wasn't a thought that I had for myself. And I was grateful for those people that said, you should run for office, because I was the first to doubt myself. I was like, well, brown gay guys don't run for anything, right? We can't get elected to anything. People wouldn't vote for us. Well, the fact of the matter is that they did. Not because of who I was, but because I was willing to put myself out there and willing to work harder than any other candidate and had the better ideas and the better campaign and the better operation such that we were able to be successful. But my fear for our community is that too many people won't have the courage to step forward. And so we need to empower one another to say, yes, you can do that. And then if you do, we will support you. My friend Mark Bartlett, who you hear from a, a little bit ago, a little bit, ran for the Chula Vista City Council. He ran a phenomenal campaign. He came up just a little bit short. But there is not a member of this community should be anything other than proud of Mark Bartlett for running the campaign that he ran and making us all proud. And the fact of the matter is, success is in running. Success is in stepping forward and taking that challenge. Because it's not easy to do. Am I right, Mark? Not easy. Not at all. But I'm here to tell you, as a member of the LGBT community, I want to be really specific. I'm the third person from the LGBT community to be elected to the city council in San Diego. But I'm here to tell you, there were a lot of people who ran before me who were not successful. Who were not successful. The first man who did it did it in the 1970s. His name was Al Best. When he ran for office, he was promptly fired by his employer. He had rocks thrown through the window of his home. And he came in fifth out of 10 candidates. But don't you believe that when he lost that election, he left the door a little bit more open for the next person? who also was not successful, and the next person, until we had a success with Christine Kehoe when she was elected to the city council in 1993, who opened the door for Tony Atkins, who opened the door for me, who opened the door for Georgette Gomez and for Jen Campbell and for Chris Ward. So I'm here to say we as a community collectively can get this done. And so I want to, I want to wind up by saying, whether it's the census, and you saw the nice young man from the center, there he is, the, the, the census. Sen we all know the census is coming in 2020. Chris Kate educated you about the fact that the redistricting uh, was uh, critical to his ability to be able to serve. And I would say that the census, obviously, is what informs that. Registering to vote, I'm sure there's folks here registering people to vote, right, somewhere? You know, about half of us are actually registered, and even fewer of us actually show up to vote, so we need to change that. And you should look at your family members and ask them, are you registered? I will tell you, I registered my parents to vote when I was 14 years old, right? They hadn't been asked. No one encouraged them to do it. I'm like, Mom, why don't we go vote? We started voting after that. They're perfect voters now, I'm here to tell you. Um, and they'll be voting in March 2020 for mayor. Let me just put that out there. <laughs> 
And then I will just say that um, whether you're successful or not, I ask you to step forward, to have the courage to do it, to support those who can do it. Not everyone can serve. This is a lifestyle. It's not an occupation, right? The, the schedule I described to you a moment ago, no one in their right mind would do that generally, right? But the, the need to serve our communities is what compels us to step forward, right? And so if, if you're brave enough to do that, fantastic. If you can't do that, support those who can. Um, and I would just wind up by saying our ability to serve in office makes a difference. I mentioned before the infrastructure is a challenge in our community, right? But you heard Chris talk about the fact uh, that the uh, senior center here in the fourth district just started getting built. I would suggest humbly that that has everything to do with the fact that our community, while still not nearly engaged enough, started showing up. I think Chris and I were at those budget hearings when the senior citizens from Tumba Park started showing up and saying, where is the money to build this park? And they showed up year after year until they broke ground on this project just a few days ago. Civic engagement can get stuff done. It can build a park in your community for seniors who have been waiting for a very long time. Through my work in the legislature, we recently were able to dedicate a portion of, of El Cajon Boulevard, Little Saigon Business District, to install signs on the I-15 freeway to let people know about API business owners who've been holding it down on El Cajon Boulevard for decades, but now have the endorsement of the state of California to say, pull off the freeway and spend some money locally and support the local small business owners who've been contributing for a long time. That's what the seat at the table in the legislature has been able to do. And whether that's been repeated on cultural adornments for API folks who are on graduation day, the list goes on and on of the bills that we've been able to move. But I just want to end by saying, um, you know, obviously it's very rare for us to be a majority in any room. And Tom knows that, and Chris knows that, and Raquel Vasquez knows that, my good friend Joanne Fields knows that. It is rare that we are the, the majority in any room. So we have to span, go out beyond ourselves, right? We have to reach out, we have to build coalitions. And I will tell you that our friends in the Latino community win when there are more Filipinos who are involved. Our friends in the African American community are empowered when there are more API people in the table. We are in this together because guess what? All of us got to pay the rent on the first of the month, right? You got that check ready? First of the month in a couple days, right? You, we all have to pay the rent at the first month. All of us fill up our cars with gas. All of us have to send our kids to school. But the question again is whether or not our issues and our perspective is at the table. For too long, those seniors from Tuma Park were not heard at City Hall. But the fact that we started getting API representation and in using the process got something done, use that example to make sure that we can make real change in this community. San Diego is a big city. It can be a great city. It will be its greatest city when we have full participation from every community, from every creed, from every uh, race and every ethnicity. We have not always been at the table, but we're changing that. And your presence here today tells me that we will, in fact, change that. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you for your involvement. Register to vote. Sign up in the census and run for office, everybody. Thank you very much.